there's an internal <laughs> bet going on at Bethesda. There is. Somebody's, <laughs> but, but like, somebody's got a target to hit with how many times they can re-release Skyrim. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jordan Swang, Pedro Mateus, and you, at home, Chat Realm Dynamic, helping us form. Unfortunately, I didn't get to update it, but dual cane, dual wielding Voltron with no hyphen. Jordan, are you, are you upset still, with me? Still no hyphen. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm <laughs> very cross. I, 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 I have literally shit my pants in rage. Oh, boo. <laughs> so, it's not, 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 not the first time. Not the first time. Um, Won't be the last either. What have you been up to, Jordan? Anything new, man? Man, I've been. I, I see I've, that you've got a new cable on your floor. Do I? Yeah, the white one. No, it's it's, it's, an, it's an old cable. Oh, they're all they're all old cables. Okay, this this is me rooting through stuff. Like I need to find that one cable. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've I've been da- data platforms, man. I've been I've been reading up on data pipelines, and it's 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 certainly a field that I am I am completely new to, and I've. I'm completing my transition to apparently becoming a Python programmer because this is apparently where my career is taking me now. Oh, man. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> Go ahead and ask Strider for help. Pedro, He'll be delighted. <laughs> Pedro, have you been up to anything I, I less do. tragic? He's, I, I, don't, I don't do man Python. I do Strider Python. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, unfortunately, my... Um, not a whole lot's been happening. Work actually managed to somehow instead of people going on vacation because you know august uh they decided no let's uh give the it people more work so this week has been very busy you've been a worky boy yeah so that the other people can go yes. on vacation yay <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you might have remembered last week both port porden and jadro were coming in um a little mm. bit cinematic well, not choppy but it looked wrong. Wait, didn't would it? his last name be Quetzal? It looked like then? 90s anime. Yeah. 12 frames a second. <laughs> it was a bit rough because we were using uh, Discord because Jitsi just told us to F right off. Okay, fine. So, Jordan and I got the same idea. Like that um, mm-hmm. linear thought process is kicked in. And, like, right when I saw Jordan drop in our Discord, it's was like, yo, Jitsi server's up. I was like, yeah, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> so we got Jitsi on top of Jitsi. We're running um we're running on Jitsi right now, but we do have a backup. Yours is in EU, right? Yep. We're good to go. Uh there's really no excuse to deploy your own Jitsi server. That was uh even like setting it up the like right way, non Docker uh, there's nothing wrong with Docker, but like going through all the steps of like setting up with like login and all that insert bot. Thirty minutes. Maybe. Maybe thirty minutes. But I also, uh, I, I'm a, I, pro, pro tip, pro tip about that, by the way, uh, you're, if you're, if you're hoping to use, uh, the dockerized version, uh, don't use it with Podman right away without modification. There's, uh, there's a couple things in the config file you need to change first. Like what? Maybe I should do an article on that. Yeah. Uh, for no, for, for, for one Podman doesn't support network aliases, which Jitsi doesn't really use except for one situation where you're just like. Okay, but if I just change the URL in here to localhost, then it works. So, oh, yeah, there, there was a Lua config that was wrong in the guide I was following, which like held me up for 10 minutes. And so I was like, wait a minute, what if I change this variable to this encrypted? Ver-? And ah, oh, there, now everything works. And that was only because I was setting up, you know, username and logins. So people just couldn't mm-hmm. hammer on it. Outside of that, I'm waiting on my rack. I ordered a little rack that's been out of stock for a year. It's my little red rack, little red racking hood. And uh, I think it'll be a little rack red. It'll be here tomorrow after waiting for Sweetwater after a week of no movement on it. I I, like send an email to my sales engineer. You get one of those with Sweetwater. I'm like, yo, where's my rack, son? It's like, oh, he left me a voicemail. So, I mean, good customer service at Sweetwater. But uh, yeah, (laughs) hopefully I will have my hipster preamp that is just like dangling on the edge of this desk over here. (laughs) And I haven't managed to knock it off for like a week. In the rack. But that, one thing that, we can that, never... That's, that's when the tempered glass, dress, glass desk fails. Okay. 
I, I saw Arthur and he was posting about that in Discord earlier this week. He's like, oh, I understand why Vin doesn't get it. He was showing the image of a guy, you know, he had yeah. shipped his buddy uh, a case, you know, just tempered glass windowed case. And like, oh, TIL, I've learned that tempered glass will just spontaneously explode, which it will. More than likely, yep. though, when it's like uh, made to pressure. <laughs> you know, even that, I'm going to say when the tempered glass is produced under the standard quality of a side panel for a computer case, which yeah. is probably not the best stuff in the world. And of course, there was the understanding why I stay away from tempered glass, to which my retort was my entire, like, all of this. <laughs> you see that? That's tempered glass. Um, That's a brave man. <laughs> Right. Tap on that. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you, you see that? Do you see the monitor stand with the two monitors on the edge? <laughs> yeah. 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 Live, living dangerously. I, I got a nice little path to get through there, and I bump this two or three, and man, I just freeze every time. I'm like, no, 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 no. <sighs> yeah, okay, uh, hope there's something not hard in your pocket there that just hits it in the wrong way. Dude. Uh, outside of that, it's wonderful. I highly, I highly recommend tempered glass uh, computer desks, especially large ones, and stack a lot of all over them. Kind of like we stack stuff on the horse. Yeah, except we don't really encase the horse in tempered glass. We choose a more explosive variety of glass to ensure <laughs> maximum shard penetration whenever anyone sauce. approaches. Yeah, it's the steam. Let X update. update. What do we this, this one week? hack oh, will man. make you very rich. No, this one simple trick, and that simple trick we're talking about, this is over at Hacker One. All this is going to be in our show notes after the fact. Head over to linksgamecast.com. Dude, um, D Briggs found a small, wee, tiny little vulnerability over on the Steam store, which uh, gave you infinite monies. Quite literally, um, allows an attacker to generate a Steam wallet balance. This has been fixed, this has been patched. So. Don't get too excited. Uh, I wonder how long something like this went on. Also, I got to say, this seems like a big hack, though, right? Like, maybe? It requires uh, some doing, uh, specifically the uh, bit that you actually have to intercept the post request to the, what was the payment method? It was a specific one, smart to pay. That's mm -hmm. the one. Uh, and you have to actually intercept it and then make a change that's not significant enough that the hash detection won't go, no, 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 that's different. Uh, just enough that it gets a little bit confused and then you can just change the value and you get that amount of money um, deposited to your Steam wallet, which, I mean, dude walked away with 7,500 pounds off of Valve's money, so that's pretty good. So <laughs> or dollars. At, yeah. le at least they didn't ban his Steam account this time. I mean, oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> I mean, on top of that, I mean, at least they didn't ignore the request until dude went on Twitter and threatened to go public about it because they reported it two years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Bug bounties. Hi, Tomas. How you They're doing? <laughs> Man, uh, what do we think about $7,500? That seems like for Valve, because like if you reported something like this to Apple, which is notoriously like stingy, then they would probably have given you a hundred grand or something like that. I, I've worked at companies that have bug bounties and like that's pretty good. Like I've I've seen like one thousand to about ten thousand, depending on the size of companies. Yeah, uh, it's, it, the bounties for fixing bugs aren't usually all that big. So seventy five hundred, I'd say that's pretty good. I always go with the severity of hack versus like something that generates yeah. free funds that they clearly didn't know about. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, no, th this would hurt the bottom line, and that's the way you get Valve to do things. Like money? What? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, speaking of money, man, let's talk about the sale dates. We, uh, we, we, got the, we, we need to put this in the um, um, like descriptions. Leaked sales, because, they're, they're, you know, you just head over to steamdb.info. But I want to tell everybody about the upcoming Steam sales, because they're happening from now until eternity. The Halloween sale is going to be on October 28th. Autumn sale, November 24th. Yay! Happy birthday Winter to me. sale, December 22nd. So, yay. Yeah, the night upcoming one is uh, Next Fest. That starts on the 1st of October. So... And you can uh, get... Uh, Wait. Well, it's not the demos. Didn't, didn't the demos we have a Next Fest already? No, that was like yes, pre-next. in June. Bully. <laughs> that was previous okay, so we're, fest. We're, we're, we're having bi biannual next fest. Got it. Okay. 
Bitch, I, uh, does I, that mean twice a year or uh, every two years? Neither of these people understand yes. the concept of second breakfast. I can guarantee you. <laughs> I, I understand third and fourth breakfast. Um, I, I don't know what 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 are people uh, what are people hoping to get cheap? Name something you don't already have that you bought cheap. I, you know what? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I'm, I'm hoping that like Baldur's Gate three early access goes down to something a little more reasonable. Maybe, maybe mm-hmm. if Outer Worlds goes cheap, I'll grab that. Cause it seems like uh one with the frequency of steam sales. I'm not even gonna say as of late, I'm say over the last five years, I, I haven't hit the um, maybe once or twice at best at the, Oh, well, psh, I guess I gotta buy that now because it's 95% off. Yeah. That that type of game. That's the one I'm talking about. I'm not talking about like oh, it's twenty well, percent off, thirty I mean, percent like, off. I don't. I give negative, negative Fs about that because they're always twenty or thirty. Just wait a week, man. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. that doesn't make me buy. It. Yeah. I, I, what 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 are you hoping goes on sale for super cheap? Is there is there anyone you're like, come on, seventy mm-hmm. percent off? Come on, seventy percent gen- off. I, I genuinely had to think about it. I couldn't think. Ah, uh, got everything. Yeah. Pedro? A risk of Rain 2, maybe. Uh, the the most that that's come down by is like 40% off or something. Mm-hmm. If it goes 60% off, I might buy it just because I really like the first Risk of Rain and this one's in 3D, so yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. There are the number digits. Uh, have fun with them. Not as much fun as you're going to have a Proton because they, they've been up to some work. Oh, yes, there's been a lot of Proton going on, and uh, you may have uh, seen the update for version 6.3. It's 6.3-6 now, and they've made uh, Tokyo Xanadu, uh, Sonic Adventure 2, Res Infinite, Elite Dangerous, Blood of uh, Blood of Steel, Homeworld Remastered, uh, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, this, the first one, uh, Guardians the, VR, uh, and 3D the Intruder. This roundup of the uh, RC that was put out last week. Yes. It is uh, the, yeah, it is basically that, but brought into uh, the proper um, release faction. You don't, don't need to opt in to the thing for this one. They also made uh, video playback improvements for Deep Rock Galactic, The Medium, Near Replicant, and Contro Corpse, uh, which I, well, I fired up Replicant without Proton GE and waited uh, in the press any button to see if the cutscene would make it crash. It doesn't crash. Oh. It still shows the video test pattern and the audio starts playing in the back, but it doesn't crash. I gotta admit that latest. So that's that's oh, good. Yeah, new new old near. It, it beat me because I couldn't do the third playthrough. I'm like, I don't care enough. I don't. <laughs> mm. You got to play as Kaine. <laughs> what? I'm talking about... Uh, yeah. Kine? Yeah. I'm on my third playthrough. I wasn't playing as Kine. Well, or is that the second? See, this is a problem with Pedro. Authoritatively <laughs> wrong, but I like working them down sometimes. <laughs> Weeb Thor. Maybe, it, maybe it's part of the second uh, playthrough as well. Uh, could be. <laughs> we, we were having a little uh, conversation on Thursday about uh, MVAPI, the new DL- DLSS stuff being uh, on or off by default. So, yeah, you're going to have to turn it on uh, on a per game basis, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Un- un- unless, unless apparently, uh, apparently some games are smart enough to figure out that there's uh, DLSS support. Now, I do like the progress that know. Proton has made because now it's went from you just assume the Proton version to work. Now it's like we, we need a new thing to go like, let's see if this works. And mm-hmm. it's, it's ray tracing and it's awesome. Let me tell you how awesome ray tracing is, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's hear it from those two <laughs> RT cores that you have going on there. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. You want to you want to play some um, Quake Two RTX in the after shows in Pedro one one v one? No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're playing at six forty by four eighty, you'll probably that, do fine. That's generous. <laughs> at 720p with low uh settings on the ray tracing ray tracing on but low settings i was getting 30 fps yeah <laughs> yeah so you, you 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 technically playable although if you're on a console it's literally unplayable you know that's not the only proton news we have this week because yeah. the experimental stuff is being experimental yep 
everything uh, since most of the important stuff has already moved to a stable branch now experimental has new stuff like new vkd 3d uh new dxvk and uh the big ones i think and i, I think strider will appreciate this quake champions works again uh resident evil 8 and microsoft flight simulator 2020 are now playable which those are like the two big ones i guess anno 1404 if you're one of those people, which there are a few of them in our Discord that seem to like the uh, those people the city will builder you. strategy. You better be careful. You better dance around this. Yeah, <laughs> and praise how great. At least uh, one of them's and, and, also in Australia, so I'll probably get I don't know venomous yeah. snake. Listen, then Victor- 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 Victorian with, uh, Sim Simulator. Shut up. Leave it alone. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, Village was actually working with Proton GE, so it's good to see that they're bringing in these fixes that Eggy is applying and making sure that the mainline yes. Proton actually makes things work. The one thing that stood out for me, though, is apparently they have uh, fixes for a Splitgate multiplayer, and we have a we have a native version of Splitgate, and gotta wonder, is, is it going anywhere? <laughs> Maybe the Proton version works we, we, better. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we did we did see that Valve is actively courting developers and saying like, hey, have you put out a Linux version? Are you willing to maybe consider looking at Proton as a solution? So it could also boil back to, hey, man, let's fix bugs with one. It's true. It, it could. Um, but definitely, definitely something to note. Because with Valve, we, we've seen that with like wine updates. Like, why are you updating that? That works fine with Linux. And like, well, you know, it's helping fix up one is yep. another option just in case yeah it could be but they, they fixed <laughs> well, the layout for the logitech g920 steering wheel controllers so there's that uh, that Excellent. is a very good wheel you can if for, you um for, for the for the one person who owns it and uses linux yeah <laughs> somebody tried if it. you're into racing games on linux that is possibly one of the best wheels because all the uh the feral ports support it so he, yeah yeah <laughs> Well, now, now they now they work in uh, now they actually work in Proton, so you will be able to play it mm-hmm. later on, about five years from now. Uh, Fair. So yep. we got yeah, some uh, new games this week. Yeah. yeah, this one's not. This is not so much a game, but a game aid. I figured I'd uh, give it a mention because it showed up in uh, our uh, our world builders, which is the dungeon mastering subreddit, and they have a Linux version. So I thought, hey, I'll give it a plug. Uh, this is Wild Shape. It's a map editor and virtual tabletop. You can use it to make like 3D maps for your board games. You can probably even use it for like um, uh, just like regular uh, level developer d- developers if you want. But uh, I don't think this is really the best tool for it. But you can make uh, 3D terrain. It's kind of like a tail spire um, for like making fancy graphical uh, representations of RPGs or board games. If that's what you're into. One problem, though, I will see. Man, this is way is better than it <laughs> yeah, it's uh for, no, for sure because you can too. you can actually fight with it <laughs> mm-hmm. uh but yeah uh there there the, there's no like the, it's not like uh hosted or anything right so anyone who wants to use this will need to have a copy of the software and it costs twenty dollars so for a st- for a standard like D group of four to five you're running about a hundred dollars canadian and that's a little that's a little hard to swallow but um, but jordan when it was <laughs> a steam remote play together you, you know what? I would be interested to see if that actually works as a solution, uh, especially for this, because you don't really care about like input latency, right? You just want to move a board game piece around or roll. Yeah, or you're just so, basically you know, showing your players what the thing that they're looking at looks like. OK, I got to throw it. Not being like the massive D&D nerd. Uh, help me out, Jordan, is because I'm looking at this. I, I'm seeing legitimately like a terrain generator and uh, it's got like some roll and, mechanics uh, in it. How does how does this play yeah, out? That's help. That, that. That's pretty much it. It uh, you you can build maps to like place like digital miniatures if you need to like track location for your game, and then there's a thing for rolling dice if you need to roll dice. Mm. So is there situations where you don't so roll you dice? Go. You just look at the terrain. You're like, yeah, nice yeah. terrain. That all right, all right, good game, yeah, everyone. Absolutely. Let's get out of here. <laughs> that's that's called Warhammer. No, uh, <laughs> bullshit. You'd have to paint things. Now Jordan's gonna get cut too. <laughs> <laughs> we got some updates and this one is not a linux update but damn it i'm of the age to where this gonna mean something to me and i am talking about the quake update from our good friends at microsoft quack welcome to quack one beth mastered it's a thing they've updated quake that's right and i just want to talk about this because microsoft quake and no linux is kind of newsworthy in my not so humble opinion but yeah firing it up it works with proton experimental actually we're gonna play around with it in the after shows and but the first thing you're greeted in after the 
intro cutscenes and all that fun stuff is a Bethesda net launcher. That's a little bit chilling, but I do want to point out it is now running on Night Dive's Kex engine because they ain't got to open source that. Yay, Microsoft <laughs> found a way. And uh, they've added cross-play, enhanced graphics, and split screen. I've seen people flip out over the split screen stuff. I don't get it. But there's also achievements. That's the thing. It does use Vulkan natively. It's got that going on for it. But after playing around with it, even with the uh, graphical updates and everything, I, I, I mean, it still like just looked like regular, like slightly enhanced Quake. It didn't really hold up compared to, um, it's like community made mods. You're, yeah. It reminds me of Skyrim, right? Like they released the HD Skyrim versions and the community mod packs look better than that. So like you just wait, what, wait until the new Skyrim comes out in a couple of weeks because it the, is the, which one, the new new Skyrim or the new 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 Skyrim the, that's coming the, out next the year. 10 year anniversary edition. The, the buy it again. We're fucker almost edition. at uh, November 11th again. So yeah, remember, so we're going to milk that <laughs> bit more. <laughs> the, there's an internal <laughs> bet going on at Bethesda. <laughs> There is. Somebody's, <laughs> like, somebody's got a target to hit with how many times they can re-release Skyrim. <laughs> but you, you have to imagine, like, there's a business case for it. Someone did market research and they're like, yeah, if we, it's look, it's working for Rockstar. They keep releasing GTA 5 over and over again. We just keep releasing Elder Scrolls 5 over yeah. and over again. It's, and uh, they tried to do that with the, well, they released Fallout 76. Everyone hated them. So they went, oh, look, new version of Skyrim. And everyone's going, yeah, okay. Uh, Pedro, <laughs> Pedro. Everyone, everyone went. Uh. I got to ask Pedro, as somebody who is a Skyrim addict adjacent. <laughs> yeah, no, I kicked off my Skyrim addiction a long time ago. Nori's still going. <laughs> has, has Nori mentioned anything about this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> she walked in the other day. Did you know that Bethesda's releasing a new version of uh, Skyrim? And I had the article open. It's like, mm. No. <laughs> What, what, no, Pedro just turns oh, around and he's okay. wearing like the Nord helmet and he has an arrow in his knee. And he's just like, you can't make me go back. You can't make Nord me go back. like, why do they keep doing this? They already re-released like the Legendary Edition and the Game of the Year Edition that had all the things. Why do they keep doing this? Because they keep making money. And she's going to still play the hell it. out That's- of it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> so let's go oh, from. Oh, shit. You what? know, it got re- recommended to me on YouTube? Your fucking Skyrim tutorial. Of course it did. They're just like. My 10 year old Skyrim watch this? tutorial? Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> like, uh. Yeah, YouTube likes to recommend my old, um, like, five year old. The One of the reasons I made my OBS Basics virtual webcam video, because people are still hitting that, man, on like 20,000. And it keeps Yeah, because YouTube keeps giving it to them, right? Like, yeah, that's right. The problem. I am trying to shift that algorithm over to something more recent. Now, let's talk about some native Linux. No. Yeah. <laughs> how about uh, Choo Choo Trains? So this is this is fun. This is Choo Choo Train Ride. Uh, it's a cheap dollar game, but they added Linux support and they did it with app images, which is always fun. I don't have. I don't think anyone here has a problem with distributing software as app images. Snap. Uh, it's not. A, it's at the. Yeah, it's not a snap package, so I think I think at, we're, we're 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 all generally generally pleased about that. Also, oh hey, they're I, actually yeah, keeping their Pedro saved data vibrating. in XCG Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's not going to create not a folder in his home directory in the uh, freaking home directory root. That that's very much appreciated. And but, you can, uh, you no, can disable uh, VSync, so your choo-choos can go 140. <laughs> Or hurts. Yeah. <laughs> if they tied the physics to the speed of the train, like a lot of games are prone to do. But no, I it, that's actually not a bad idea. Just use app images to ship your game. Probably could have uh, done some reading into Pressure Vessel because Valve seems to be putting a lot of work into that specifically to make it as distro or glibc version agnostic as possible uh but i'll take the app image i'll take the app image any day of the week uh we've already what did we throw slipstream that's the game ah. we threw chairs at that had um that was that was just an app image. i uh th- there was that uh albion mmo as well that uh i yes. it was it was a it was, they shipped it as a flat pack but so again still same same deal right like that the works, pressure vessels built on flat pack so yeah <laughs> yeah all right. I mean, it's an endless runner choo-choo. I mean, I do 
genuinely don't understand how that works, but hey, I mean, it's less than a it's, box. It's, 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 it's tracks. Tracks. There's like four tracks and you got to like sw- switch between the various tracks. That's how trains work. collide into ghosts. That's one thing I hate about yeah, it. Absolutely. I, I genuinely hate at being near a train tracks parallel because sometimes that train just jumps right over. Like, <laughs> yep. Oh, right. <laughs> Blinky yeah. train's like, <laughs> that's it. That's how I went out. Jumping trains. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this this next one comes from uh, Mir, who suggested it. If you're a Patreon, you can suggest things for uh, the show as well. Uh, so that's yeah. something we'll explain a little bit later. Uh, but Wormsun has a new version out. Uh, patch 5.0.0. It's one of those 2D strategy games that implements a uh, game similar to like Dune 2000. Uh, except this is uh, fantasy. Um, Control F Linux finds nothing though, but they have things like, uh, they've at, uh, added, uh, support for encyclopedia <laughs> entries, having links to each other. There's, uh, updated factions. Uh, they added, they have some fixes for the map editor, like a crash when you click. Okay. When you click on the player property dialogue, that's, that's always fun. <laughs> There's a couple of big things um, in here, man. Like the reworked UI, they've upgraded the oil lamps. Finally quest updates <laughs> and yeah, the less crashy map editor, I think is going to make everyone happy. Indeed. Uh, the, the, the new, the new, the new UI is based on cute. So, uh, that's, that's always fun to see like, Hey, we're using open source tool for it. It is kind of cute though. Um, because it, uh, at UHD it opens and not, not as funny as that one game we were sent that opened in like, you know, a six, four, oh, Sur- 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 yeah. a three twenty by 200. It, it, it like was that. a dot on a UHD <laughs> screen. This is, I think it opened in uh, like at least seven twenty, which is still kind of small at UHD, but it is there, and it's, it's an open source. It's been out forever, and go check it out yep. on Steam. It's a great way to uh, keep track of versions. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I guess the last Tronicon. one is... Uh, yeah, it's a game we threw chairs at long ago, and uh, it was one... We don't get games that I would uh, describe like a as a ago. technical shit show on a very regular basis. According but to this you, one was don't. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> this one was very much one of them. Uh, there's a new DLC coming, and they do have Hang the on. DLC you, page. You see developers sending us copies of your games. Pedro can shit on them twice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's a new DLC coming. The The DLC store page is up now, but it's not available yet, so you can just look at the pretty screenshots and the uh, the trailer video. The uh, the not, anomalies, well, which is not, what not quite. The, the right? what you what you're talking about? They they added a bunch of new monsters that are spoilers for the new DLC, or variations. Uh, yes, on those uh, monsters. The, yeah. That you there's. Uh, I was gonna go through the release notes now, but uh, yeah, Jordan jumped the gun on that one. The <laughs> well, this um, is why we write stuff down in show notes. See, Pedro, if you just read what you didn't. Which was yeah. what I was doing. Uh, the yeah, the anomalies, which is what they call the uh, end game dungeons. Uh, those are now more varied and include some of those spoilerific monsters. What Jordan was uh, very emphatically I- hinting at. The uh, there's some new bosses for the anomalies as well as an endless mode. If you just want to go in and have at you can uh the furps are still locked at sixty because it's game maker. I did download it again to give it a try. It's like, okay, let's try the new version because I didn't hate the game. Uh, it technically speaking, it was a shit show because, uh, if you don't remember the review, whenever, uh, I tried to start the game with the dual shock four turned on, it crashed. It just started up and immediately crashed. You said it like a bad thing. It still does it. It was trying to save you <laughs> from that horrible then, controller. When, when we, um, when we threw chairs at it, I didn't have the dual sense. So I decided, you know what? Let's try the dual sense. Turned on the dual sense, uh, try to start the game, pfft, crash. Started the game, turned on the dual sense after it was already running, pfft, crash. Still have to use KWIN to uh, get full screen to work properly because that was something that didn't work for any of us. So uh, yeah, that that's. Um did you try they, it with, they didn't fix anything. Did you try it with Proton? <laughs> I did not, no. Oh. <laughs> this was for the native version, you know. I know. I Listen, I'm just trying to piss off people. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Are you new here? <laughs> Hi, I know. Yeah, this lovers. is the new picture. Don't yeah. you remember? I don't know. <laughs> uh, wait, we, we, un- we just yeah. unwrapped this one. <laughs> or just the one. Yeah, just the one. Just the one. <laughs> we'll get to them in a second. All right, so that's the thing. We got to bounce out of here, but we're about to get into the news. 
Yeah, coming up next. Oh my God, Intel is coming in with their big dick GPU swinging. I came in like Nvidia. An Nvidia is. King yeah, King they they, they want to deny you either way. <laughs> and here we are. Before we get to the news, we do uh, need to uh, shit take on a bit real of a tech break. some more. Let's talk about Intel. Well, we can shit on real tech. We can shit on Intel. In fact, we'll get to that in a moment. But before we get to that, we need to thank can we, you. Can we be edgy Everyone and call watching. it Wintel? Like, <laughs> Stupid insight. Win, win uh, don't. <laughs> Becky with a Wintel. I mean, they're not even going to support Windows 10 with the new processors, so that's uh, that's always fun. The, Why are uh, you saying that? They're developing Windows uh, right now for the big little. But that's the thing. That only supports Windows 11. Yeah, don't well, don't worry. Now. It'll it'll just run. It'll run in a browser in Microsoft Internet Explorer. Listen, all you have to do is install DX thirteen Chim, and it'll work fine. <laughs> j- j- or you just, just run, run Linux just run and DXVK. You get rid of it all. <laughs> but yes, yeah. you all. Uh, this is your uh, appreciation moment, and we also get the chill for ourselves a little bit ish. Yes. <laughs> So let, let's begin. Head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Give us lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of money, or just give us a couple bucks every week. Either lots way, it's good. Uh, we, yeah, we got we to gotta thank Jim and Nubbin, who are our brand new, uh, or Nubbin, Nubbin increased their pledge, sort of, kind of, maybe. The bot said so. We'll find out later. And we got to thank Jim. Damn yes. it, Jim. Damn it, Jim, your new patron. I, <laughs> damn it, Jim. I'm a doctor, not a light bulb, not a volcano, not a Linux computer. Since uh, uh, Pedro is so good at this. You gotta tell me something I don't know about Jim. <laughs> well, I could tell you that you don't know Jim, but uh, you've hosted plenty of. Oh no, wait, that's Jack. Never mind. The uh, let's see, Jim once um, Jordan. He's fucking trying. Doc poop. I don't. Yeah, fucking he's, know. He's, he's, <laughs> He 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 is he is treading so much water. You know what, Jim? Jim's awesome. I've seen him explode tigers with his eyes. It's nuts. I've seen him stare at a tiger and it explode. Did and the zoo people were very very bad at him. They politely escorted him out. Politely and him from the zoo. You know that is politely. really the best the best in case scenario for accidentally exploding a tiger. One can really expect. Yeah, they, 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 well, they, they they didn't want to see if he could explode other things, right? They're just like he already exploded a tiger. Let's just nicely ask him to leave and not polite, tempt him. Polite, <laughs> yeah, escort the guy who can make scooch, shit explode with his eyes. Scooch. Yeah, I, I mean, it never hurts to ask nicely. I want to uh, thank uh, like, Jim like for doing that, man, and Nubin increased yeah. the pledge. And allegedly, uh, and you know. Allegedly, maybe according to our according to Nightbot. Yeah, Anyways, we, uh, yeah, becoming a Patreon gets you some cool stuff like access to our Discord channel. Uh, if you're an executive producer or higher, you get the live video version of the pre pre Super Chosen, which is a uh, little sardine focused podcast that we do at the at, at seven thirty uh, before we go live with. See, Disney I like nonsense. the way Novin put it. He upgraded. Yes. Uh, upgraded. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he, uh, take he, it. He whatever that means. New features. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, cool. uh, you you can also unlock features like access to the show notes, uh, getting your name in the credits, uh, uncut early vods, and uh, you can even RSVP to game streams. And one We're thing be I want to say about the uh, live and uncut series that we put out in podcast and video format, even the YouTube video, completely ad free. We don't throw any ads on that, so you can watch Ooh. that uninterrupted. I have a crazy idea I've been thinking about doing for patrons, Jordan. Oh, what was that? Yeah, since, you know, we, we, we demonstrated that we have the ability to, like, dual stream, right? Mm-hmm. What if we dropped, like, an ad-free YouTube stream for patrons? Because I know the Twitch mm. ads can get a little, like, argh, argh. Mm, maybe. I mean, yeah. you're okay. comparing ads on one platform to ads on the other. Uh, patrons, <laughs> I know you're wholly unfamiliar with broadcasting. I can disable and all the ads on YouTube and that actually works for, uh, for, for now, at least let's, let's, let's be real. YouTube might decide that you get ads, whether you like it or I not. I understand you're trying to be now. right. I'm just telling you the reality of it. So Pedro, <laughs> what is your retort to that? When I click uh, no ads, cause there's no ads in the pre pre super shows and nor have there been, which we live stream to our executive producers. Share with me more of your theory on this ads that are going to show up. Besides YouTube slapping ads on stuff. Just because they feel like it, yes. <laughs> For a live stream where I have the option to disable it completely. It, I mean, I've heard plenty of YouTubers complaining that they've clicked that option and they have. For live streams, Pedro? 
Yes, for the live stream. Show me one. You, you, you know, let, you know what? If you have one, if you have an example or counterexample, send us some hate mail. I'm tired of How listening to this argument. How dare you? I was having store. fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. Store.linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> buy some t-shirts, buy some stickers, buy some coffee cups. We have masks to protect yourself from the Rona because it's still out there. It's going to be out there forever now. Defeat some facial recognition while you're at it. Uh, yeah, everything here is reasonably priced. It's decent quality. I have that uh, Lonely Penguin shirt that has not disintegrated yet despite wearing it quite a bit nice that's pretty decent uh everybody's got a wish zone if you want to help we got some names on this backboard right here these are people who've helped us unlock kind of like a cheat mode for the studio to bring you bad horrible fun educational there's a lot of ways to cut it information and entertainment um that's how you end up we got a little wish zone go head over to the site look at it pedro and jordan have some personal Amazon wish zones. If you want to pick up something for these two yahoos, I highly recommend it. You can send them a note and they got to read it because them's the rules. We only make them and yeah. enforce them with brutality. Indeed. And if you send Ben some stuff, you get your lovely name on that sparkly. Yeah, literally what I just said. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, listen, I'm not the, I'm not the only one who will repeat things that have previously been said on the podcast. And I'm sure because I'm not the only one who said, who's repeated things that have been previously said on the podcast. You know what? That's like asking somebody in the vocal booth to be like, hey, uh, it says reverb. Yeah, just sing it twice. Yeah, do it. <laughs> we'll just re rewind it really fast. So, uh, do, we, do we got anything else we got to talk about? I or think can that's we get on to it for the shilling, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, everyone, if you subscribe to us on Twitch, uh, you can pop into the Discord during the week. That's where we hang out the other six days of the week. And But we do have IRC. It's wide open. It's free. Always will be for our live streams, which is also tied into our Discord. So come hang out with us wherever you chat. But um, actually, we still have to shill for Intel. Thank you very much. Oh, right. We, we got to cash that Intel check, right? <laughs> yeah. Obviously. Wait, you guys are getting paid? <laughs> Back to Intel. Um, and <laughs> Our favorite company since, uh, I don't know, man. <sighs> Intel Arc. They finally gave a name to it. The journey begins with intel videos that aren't loading good job intel good job uh they're planning to launch this this is going to be their new hotness their new graphics cards uh just not just discrete but they're going to be in laptops too it's going to be like the arc platform kind of like the remember the intel centrino platform it's the uh smorgasbord the all-in-one type thing not necessarily all-in-one but you know you gotta have everything together the entire family is going to be called arc uh it's gonna be built uh gaming first the code names are all over the damn place, aren't they? Starting with like Alchemist and uh, they're going to be Druid, Battle Mage, that yeah, shit, yeah, Battle Mage, and all that. They're going to be available allegedly between uh, sometime between January and March of twenty twenty two. Uh mm. Mm. Yeah, no, see, the, the, they previously said, oh, yeah, we'll have uh, an announcement in um, summer 2021. I guess it was literally just the announcement. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know the the. Hi. Here, here, here's, here's, here's the thing: if they if they can come out with something like reasonably priced and available, that's that's it, right? Like, sure, it's coming out in 2022. What's what is the GPU landscape gonna look like? Because uh, uh, probably know, exactly like it looks or, right now, man. All all yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I think Intel knows this. And I, I brought this up on Wednesday's show. Uh, Intel walking into a market doing what Intel does best. And that's playing dirty as fuck. Because Intel, I genuinely believe, to walk into this, they're going to be selling these things at cost. Just to blow the fuck out of that market. Yeah, because I, if they can execute this in the first oh. quarter of next year, you think GPUs are going to be available by then? Because they're not. They they they, they, they got nope. they gotta push it out in <laughs> such a huge scale that would just What would happen. Intel know about doing that? <laughs> they have been the world's yeah. premier supplier of x86 CPUs for the past But will they do it? That's the question. It's not <laughs> if they can, it's if they will. If they and we should point out that these GPUs are not being fabbed in house there. I think it's TSMC. So Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I want to see. I want Player 3 to come in. Again, this is so bad because I want Intel to come in and play dirty. I want them to put these things, make them silly Low cheap. Cost. 
not even below cost. I just want them to be like regular priced because they're going to look low cost compared to what NVIDIA and AMD <laughs> are very happy selling. Like, oh, the new normal is uh, mid range mm-hmm. is yeah, five, $800. 500 for yeah. the mid end. Yeah. No, that's low yeah. end. That's low end. Yeah, 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 that's a low end. That, that's right. Go, I, go and find a sixteen fifty for, for less than five hundred dollars right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was I was looking for a low fil- profile ten fifty, and I'm like, wow, I don't want to pay four hundred dollars for that card. Fuck that. You know what? <laughs> that's actually not a bad point. How good are they going to be at mining the Ethereum? Not BTC. You don't use uh, GPUs for BTC yeah. mining. Uh, that's if so. Yeah, uh, cri- crypto is the big one. Yeah, Ho- hopefully. And 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 here and here's the thing, like if it's if it's Intel and if it's using like any of the Knights Corner shit, I'm, I would be thinking like this is prime target for like optimized like crypto mining. So I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, because one of the things we covered on Wednesday, should I bring that up again? Is they just released a new uh, version of um, effectively low hash, you know, hash rate limiter from Nvidia yeah, yeah. for nine thousand, which gives you about seventy percent of the performance you would get with an LHR Nvidia card, completely yep. wrecking anything yeah. that they've done. For Ethereum, well, I, I mean, like it's it's the it's the whole arms race thing. Any sort of stopgap they're going to put in place to stop people from mining Ethereum, if there or any crypto, if there's money to be made, these people are going to be working their asses off to squeeze whatever red cent they can from it. You know what, Intel? Here's what you do: make make these things pull 400 watts at idle. <laughs> yeah, just, just just make it so that you actually have to have a like a hydroelectric dam to power the damn GPU. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Make, make the cost to exactly. return ratio the ROI just on that completely. Yeah, just wreck yeah. it. <laughs> just wreck it. Uh, no, I, uh, oh no, no, it only works with Windows 11. They only provide the drivers for Windows 11. That's their. Okay, here's another and thing. The Intel GPU drivers are already open. They're the only truly open source drivers that we actually have. Yeah. So, then, okay. Then, then we get like <laughs> Intel Wi Fi drivers. I mean, eh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, the GPU drivers, those are all actually open source, unlike AMDs. Sorry. But, 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 but you're going to make <laughs> Linus mad. He's not going to make any more tech tips if you keep that up. <laughs> Oh, he'll have his OnlyFans. It's fine. Fair enough. Yes. <laughs> NVIDIA. Uh, not to shield too hard for uh, Intel. NVIDIA GPU supplies to remain constrained for the vast. Yes. Another news. Water's still wet. Uh, this has come from PC Mag. <laughs> yes. You can find all of this in our show notes. After that, this just walks through uh, bad news for graphics buyers. NVIDIA CEO Jensen. Was it Jensen or was it the leather jacket? You could never tell who actually said this. He says, <laughs> one of them. I would expect we will see a supply constrained environment for the vast majority of next year is my guess at the moment. Also, yes. I I, I like like that bit. I like that bit about how, oh, people are waiting to upgrade their GPUs to a 30 series. Yeah, because that's the only thing they can upgrade it to at this point. Anyone who's actually doing anything more than gaming and uh, has realized, oh, yeah, NVENC is actually pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of people looking to move from the old Pascal encoder to the new one. That would have been nice, you know. Yeah, it's called Turing, <laughs> Real Pedro, nice. because Turing that encoder is the same thing that's in the thirty series. Uh, y- yeah, I could Man, go to Turing, I- except oh, uh, let's let's have a look at the price for I don't know anything that'll be an upgrade from my 1080 the 2080. Yeah, I'm not paying a thousand dollars. All for you that. have to do is quit buying junk laptops for a month, and you'll have the money. <laughs> the junk All you have to do is go back in time pounds. when you could get a 2080 for like 400 bucks <laughs> when they were just clearing them out a couple of years ago. Though I think the one thing that this shortage has shown, and, and then you know, AMD and Nvidia both came out, and like Nvidia, especially showing what was their profit, like billions of. Um, they're yeah. very happy with this because they can't make these things fast enough and they can't sell them fast enough even yeah. at like whatever yeah. marked up price you know so and they will sell as long as you have a card out it will sell <sighs> good times everyone it's great but it, it it's taught me patience because i look at my 26 you know what this is my life now i can accept this i can make it work i'm not happy about it but i'm not Going to spend ten, more ten than ETI still has legs. I'm not going to spend more than I ever said. My max is like 450 max for a 30 60. 
Like that is absolute worst case scenario. I'm desperate, nowhere to go. It's never going to be more than that. So I'm just going to ride this 2060 until that happens. I'm waiting for my mining cards, baby. Or or maybe Intel has some like crazy encoder situation. Who knows? Raja came out. I, I look forward to dedicated quick sync. That, that, that'll be an interesting thing. <laughs> we don't know what it's going to be called or what it's using, if it's going to be de- dedicated silicon, but they plan, <laughs> according to Raja, that they're going to compete with NVIDIA on that level. So, Yeah, it's, we'll it's not like AMD is, right? Nope. I mean, Raja Kaduri was also the one who went up on stage and claimed that um, two RX 480s in Crossfire would uh, outperform an, an NVIDIA GTX 1080. Do you think anyone believed him, though? Yeah, do you think we'll he look at our him? AMD around that you, time? <laughs> a lot of people believe that. Do, 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 do you think he was paid to make a statement for the company he was working for? I told you. Marketing? Yeah. Did you think he's not getting paid now? He's just doing nope. that out of the kindness of his heart? He is. <laughs> no? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just saying, like, you're, 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 you've, you've been holding this over his head like the fucking sword of Damocles for, like, Listen, man. the past uh, yeah. five years. Uh, I'm sure he'd like everyone to forget about that, but I don't trust a damn thing Raja Kaduri says. <laughs> all right. You got a tough life, you, you, baby. You That's continue that hate bonus, then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, direct In the meanwhile, I'm going to be using Alpha DirectX 12. Are you? Yeah, this is uh, API Trace. Uh, Joshy's keep Joshy's keeping up the work. You know, uh, you might have realized we we talked about it in the previous segment. Uh, Resident Evil Eight Village is now playable via Proton Experimental, part in parcel to development done on the API Trace here for D three D twelve. Now they could actually go into RE Eight Village, find the areas where there are crashing, there is crashing and performance issues, and help fix them on the Dixvix side, which is kind of the big idea behind this project. And it's good to see that yep. it's still chugging along. These, uh, these fixes also help apply to uh, Unreal Engine 4 as well. Nothing very sexy, but it's like it's the it's the in the trenches work that needs to be done to support the stuff long term. Mm-hmm. So it's good to see that Joshi is still putting effort towards it. This is uh, something I'm always keeping a lookout on because this is where the gains. If you don't keep track of this stuff, this is going to show up in Proton eventually. And like, oh, look, wow, everything just got really smooth. And it's always fun to go back and see the performance increase. Pedro, what do you hate about this? I don't hate a damn thing about this. Are you sure? <laughs> no, this is, uh, yeah, this is just Joshi's own fork of API trace that makes, that's delivering the improvements for D- VKD 3D. So, it, yeah, no, this is good. This is just good. <laughs> Indeed. Man, I thought we got done shilling Patreon. D- not our, no, our Patreon. No, this the, is someone this else's is, Patreon. Uh, yeah, this is Ziculus's Patreon. <laughs> Multi Zork. So um, this this is a lovely little blog post. Uh, Ryan is going back in time, remembering, reminiscing about games that he really used to like, uh, like Zork. Um, and Zork is kind of interesting. He goes into sort of the uh, development back end of Zork and this whole notion of like the original developers constructed like a, what is effectively a Zork virtual machine that you don't need to actually port Zork. You just need to fork the you just need to port the the uh, the Z machine, and then you can get Zork running on literally anything, which is really fascinating. And what follows is one man's descent into the groove-filled caverns of madness. As he starts, he, he's like, I re-engineered Zork. Um, there's, uh, there's space for uh, five more objects in their little object array. Let's add more players. And as such, um, documented this process. And now you can, uh, you can tell that to a server and play multiplayer Zork. Um, mm-hmm. But I... I I keep I, I insist that Telnet needs to fucking die, but I will give credit where credit is due. Ryan is telling people to use Netcat. Thank you. Yes, man. Telnet all the things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, th- he starts the the thing by saying, "You ever play uh, this game in your head where you have this piece of software you love, and you find your mind idly imagining how to build it yourself?" No. No, I have not. <laughs> In fact, my brain is hardwired to the point where the moment anything goes anywhere near programming, it just... <coughs> nope. Uh, no, no, <laughs> I will definitely get to the point. How bad do we want this? <laughs> no, not for me. <laughs> and that's immediately followed by who owes me what favor. <laughs> but, uh, you know, to Ryan's credit, I did just... Uh, Netcat, uh, he has the um, the server... Up and running. I just not cat into it. It's like, oh, it works. Did okay, watch, did cool. You get, did you get done with that and watch Star Wars? 
But no, I was, I can't remember what I was watching, but I was watching some show on Netflix, I think. In your terminal? On, 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 on Telnet? <laughs> Man, <laughs> I, I, I'm looking forward to this Telnet support on Netflix. They, they, I, I, I want to. No, so, it I wasn't another one. How much do I got to yes. pay for that plan? <laughs> you know what? That would get me. April Fool's, free Netflix. There you go. Yeah. Free, free um, Netflix over Telnet, ASCII ask encoded. Multiplayer Zork. That, that's kind of interesting. And you got to think, like, uh, some good things come out, like uh, forced isolation, pandemic. Some we get some neat things like this. <laughs> yeah, and the, the, this is this is what happens when you let talented creative people just do stuff. Because like multi Zork would not happen if Ryan didn't have a Patreon, right? Right. Like, there's there's a lot of this yeah. stuff. You got that little that bit of change there, that's, and you're like, hmm. I wonder what we can do with that. And it's also the motivation, you know. So head over to his Patreon and be like, hey, man, I believe in what you're doing. Here's a buck. Here's two bucks. Here's a thousand bucks. It, indeed. So, uh, Pedro, I have a question for you. Uh, when are you Shoot. getting your pink kitty keyboard? Uh, when I find one that doesn't have blue switches. Here, here's a question. Um, uh, is uh, Does Nori have any uh, <laughs> pink peripherals? No. She is not a big fan of pink. She uh, likes blue, blue, like uh ocean blue, that uh, darkish blue with a little bit of green to it. Yeah, to, uh, Aqu- aquamarine. So, so yeah. what, you, what you're saying is you can weaponize Teal. a keyboard that she wants by getting it in pink. <laughs> I, I thought yes, you were going to weaponize me on pink. <laughs> she would uh, take that as an insult. Yes. Mm. <laughs> well, uh, Open Razor has a new version out. Um, they they have uh, version three ten out. You can get it on GitHub. Uh, they have new support for the Razor Blade Advanced twenty twenty one, the Razor Black Widow V three ten keyless, the tournament Black Widow tournament the tournament edition, Basilisk Essential, the Blade fifteen mid twenty twenty one, and the Huntsman V two analog. But there are the other thing that that people might be interested in is if you have the Kraken Kitty edition, you have Kraken brand new Kitty. events for it. So, <laughs> Kraken Kitty Edition, man. It's Katsulu or some shit. I don't know. But I saw that and I'm like, this, this is that pink ass keyboard, isn't it? Yes, it is. I don't know, man. When I hear Kraken Kitty, I'm like, is that like the Japanese take on Breaking Bad? <laughs> no, that, that's uh, that, that's just another hentai. Yeah, okay. yeah, probably. Yeah, it is the open razor. For some reason, I have the uh, razor um, kernel module installed. I'm not entirely sure exactly what pulled that down on my system, but it's not doing anything. I'm also it's curious just what it's every- doing. Uh, no, I see what it's doing. It's like every time there's a kernel update, I see the DKMS. It's like, eh, okay, uh, is it actually loaded? So no, it, it's it, not loaded on anything. Yeah, so I, right. I would wonder. You probably <laughs> it's, just it's a great little keylogger, it. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the thing. The kernel module itself is not loaded. It's installed, but it's not loaded. So you don't know why it's installed? I don't know why it's installed, no. You, I and I've, I keep telling myself, I got to figure out what pulled this exactly. I just um, haven't gotten around to it yet. Here, the, the, at, that, at that point, you do rm-rf mm-hmm. user source <laughs> and then the name of that package, because I don't know what the fuck that is, and I don't want it on my All computer I'm anymore. All I'm saying is pwning Pedro's computer is going to be priceless and easy. Um, yes. Pwning my computer will be boring as shit. <laughs> I am not a very interesting person, but by all means. No, no, listen, no, no one was saying that, but that's not why people pwn computers. <laughs> Pedro, I'm, they're interesting. You, you don't it's even think correctly when it comes to mobile. I'm just going to force change it to everything in English. <laughs> no, no, you, you change his locale to Spanish. That's what don't, you do, just the troll. No, I'm going to change it to Brazilian. I can read Spanish as fine. Brazilian Portuguese. <laughs> Brazilian, por- yes, yes. A- a- alias all the other language settings to Brazilian That's Portuguese. So every time he tries to change get. it, it's right. <laughs> and I'm going to app mark hold everything else. So it's a, yes for a module that isn't even loaded. You guys have uh, built an entire movie off of it. But more like a <laughs> mini series three parter. Yeah. I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, like we, we we can't do it in less than six and hours. Listen, for it's sure. going to be low, but it's going to be on L. Ray. I got Denny. I got Denny Villanueva on the phone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we'll be able to work. Only, only got, accessible via Telnet. I don't know who we can get to play Pedro's computer, but we'll work something out. We <laughs> Sean Bean. <laughs> Sean Bean. He's, it's going to die. So we might get Sean Computer's going to die. All right. Fair enough. Open Dragon. Because that. Yes. Not only is that a thing, you know about it. Do you have a red yes, dragon? It module is uh, a driver specifically for the red dragon um, 
Well, this one is just for the mice, specifically the M607, the M909, and the M601-3, which, yeah, the, those are just mice. Well, uh, the M601-3, nothing works yet. It's still very much a work in progress. The M602 and the 909, you can actually control the lighting, uh, which would uh, now is the point that I would ask, wh why did you create Open Dragon and not just submit that to OpenRGB? Also, if you're going to call it Open Dragon and you, your intent is to support the Red Dragon and uh, peripherals, oh, ooh, why not the blinky keyboards? I know three people that have Red Dragon blinky keyboards. Not a single one has a mouse. Where the keyboard? Maybe did you stop to think like maybe the uh, keyboards are just ridiculously expensive or something like that? No, they're actually as far as mechanical keyboards go, they're the cheap ones. <laughs> oh, maybe. <Yeah. laughs> maybe the dude doesn't use keyboard. Huh? Could be. He only has he the two, <laughs> the M601 and the M607 mice along with the 909, maybe. Yeah, maybe he's just got left and right click <laughs> motherfucker types in binary with a shift key. <laughs> no, it's Morse code. Oh, there you <laughs> and uh, Mira is saying that the Red Dragon keyboards are actually supported in OpenRGB. Ah. So why? <laughs> maybe. Okay. Now L listen, you say that. How hang dare on. people have options? Hang on. I, I will go ahead and tell you this thought process. He's like, you know what? I just want to develop this shit. I don't want to deal with fucking having to get this shit accepted. I just want something that works. By the way, I made a thing that works. If you want to fucking use it, here it is. <laughs> okay. So that, some, someone has been dealing with the OBS development team. That's that's some OBS <laughs> dev team trauma. I don't, I don't want to deal with, with these fuckers. I'm going to make my own thing. project. <laughs> so I'm just going to do my thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I, I think it's, it's, it's a valid approach. I'm going to say he just did his yes. own thing. He's like, hey, you know what? I'm also going to be a sport and like release it. You know what? Open RGB if you want it. Go get it. Strider it. Yeah. Yeah. You can do it yourselves. <laughs> Is that Indeed. It? Are we done? <laughs> I yep, think so. That's it for the news. Coming up next, <laughs> it's time to make your dentist a very rich man. We're going to paint the town red. Welcome back to the Chairquisition. I see a red town and I must paint it black. Uh, this week we're throwing chairs at Paint the Town Red, developed by Southeast Games, done on the Unity Engine. Unity Engine. You can pick it up for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your boy. It's your boy, FEJ. No, um. Paint the Town Red, uh, it's 20 bucks US. What is it? Paint the Town Red is a chaotic first-person melee combat game set in different locations and time periods. The voxel-based enemies can be punched, bashed, kicked, stabbed, and sliced completely dynamically using almost anything that isn't nailed down. Uh, so we got to thank Stride PR for sending us some keys. And with that, we're going to get into it. Pedro, tell us about Paint the Town Red. Yeah, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080, it launched out of the box. It does not hold 144 at um, 2560 by 1440. If you're looking at the video version, you can see very much that. Which makes me wonder what manner of shader shenanigans are taking place. Quick question, did you uh, throw in any of the footage of the primary part of the game? Uh, the, no. The just the, the, the regular the punchy bits. All right, so like, okay, fair thing. This is not representative of the game. I, this is uh, very rep much representative of the, of the yeah one of the modes, uh, which is the roguelikey one. But we'll get to that. The uh, this is a Boston keyboard affair. It, I still love to see a Unity game that where the mouse sensitivity slider actually works uh it came with both was and the directional arrows mapped so i just had to map the right control and right shift as well there's a lot of voxels and not a whole lot of textures honestly as far as technical as the technical side goes i can give it a clean bill of health as for the fun yeah yes it is fun um it's hard, roguelike hard. In fact, Beneath, which is the mode that if you're looking at the video version, it's what you're seeing, is very much a roguelike with a ha uh, Half-Life-esque uh, introduction. Uh, it's got the elevator and then you have to go down the elevator to actually start the thing. Uh, it reminds me of Eldritch a little bit, overly simplistic graphics, but more or less cohesive in the aesthetic in general. 
there, uh, then there's the scenarios, which is what Ven was alluding to as the main mode, which is debatable, uh, which are just a small map where you have to kill everyone else. Uh, there's the different maps. You can even download um, player um, created maps to just go at it and do it yourself. And then there's the arena mode, which is exactly what you expect. You go in sequence with different types of enemies and or supporters and you have to stay alive. Arena also has a survival mode, which is basically, it just keeps on going and going and going. And I'm pretty sure people are cheating their ass off at that because number one stayed alive for 25 hours and I need to press X to doubt that one. So yeah. And finally, uh, yeah, the, the, the player made levels basically create this effective, endless uh, stream of content, assuming people are actually doing anything. I can absolutely see why this game has as many positive reviews as it does on Steam. 94% out of uh, 12,361. That, that's, that's very good. And yes, beneath the roguelike mode is by far my favorite. Four chairs. <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll go next. On Fedora, 34, 64-bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. It launches out of the box, holds 60 at UHD and in windowed mode 1080p. Uh, the box of graphics, they're fun. They make it so that you can very clearly see the poles and gashes and shit that you are stabbing through your opponents. Uh, makes all the bodies highly destructible. It's quite hilarious. Uh, I like the soundtrack. It's pretty fun. It gets you pumped. It gets you into it. Um, this, as Pedro mentioned, it's first person brawler. So you wazed and to move and you must punch, uh, the controller sport works. I can tell you that it works and nothing else. Um, so fun wise, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to want to bring some friends. The game certainly does attempt to give you its money's worth or your money's worth. There are modes and mods and challenges to keep you occupied if this was the one game to keep you busy for 2021. Uh, and uh, the multiplayer modes are, for the most part, available to, for single player. The mods themselves, like the weak enemies, super hot mode, et cetera, et cetera, aren't necessarily on the multiplayer. Uh, but in and in that light, I feel the single player just becomes a little bit met as a result. Uh, the the beneath roguelike mode kind of ends up feeling a lot like just a Voxley ziggurat, which isn't a bad thing. But you know, I kind of when when you're have it's not so much lonely fun. It's more fun when you have some buddies along. Um, and yeah, the, 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 the class based bit is interesting. The, uh, on Thursday when we were streaming it, we played the survival mode and the brawl mode, uh, where I, I tried doing that, uh, single player. I almost managed to win one time. There were like three guys left and I had like a sliver hit point and I let one guy like brush me and I lost and I'm like, damn it. But, it, but, and I immediately thought, man, this would have felt a lot better if I had a friend to throw under the bus for this. So I don't know. I'd, I'd compare this favorably to Gorn. It's you, you, you can like rip people to shreds. It doesn't quite match the brutality, uh, but it's certainly it's certainly entertaining me enough. I'm going to give it three chairs. It's fun. Bring some friends. All right. So let me reset my clock too. All right. What are we looking at? This is the byproduct of if you're stuck playing the game in forever alone mode, this is probably the only mode you're going to find any type of enjoyment with. Um, how does it run over the 1920X? Running Debian 11, which is officially out now. 32 gigajoules of RAM. Tight, tight, tight. No problems whatsoever. Full screen windowed mode. No problems. I picked up the X-Clone controller. No issues there. And it ran like a champ, as you would expect, because it's not graphically intensive at 1080p with everything on 11. Now, with the fun, you know what? This game spent a lot of time in development hell, but hey, look at this. It's out. And Paint the Town Red is really too possibly three games in one you know you have that forever alone mode which we're watching here and you know it has a few scenarios and a few modes just to mix things up but after like an hour plus if you're playing by yourself all of this at least for me got boring with a quickness in fact if you're not planning on playing this with your mates you might end up returning it because it's really really short for the price it does however have this dungeon crawler mode built in but it's roguelike and that, that's just not a bonus for me it's not if you have some friends laying around the house, um, things do get a bit more interesting. You know, we tried it in Coop. We had a good time in all of the levels, all the modes, but it really could do with some more levels. You know, it's kind of limited with, uh, you know, your C, the bar, the disco. Fun, but I'd like a little bit more variety. And also, I think Jordan can back me up. That cannon? Seriously? Yeah, you... 
you should be able to fire cannons in the environment. Like the, there should be environmental stuff you could. Do I just here. wanted Absolutely. to kill some people with that cannon pen. Now, arena mode was a good time, like right up into the point where the hockey stick could have kicked in, and we all got one shotted by the boxers. I'm like, well, fuck. All right. Well, yeah, and they they give you just stacks of bills to fight with. That's it. <laughs> And uh, Dungeon Crawl, it's serviceable if you have some other people to play with, but even then, that was my least favorite of the modes. But hey, man, it's there, and it's there kind of like you would expect uh, table tennis to be in this game as well. It's just, we, we were running through the, you know, what the game, like, hey, this is a brawling game, and you beat up people and all that, and then we were going down the modes, and we're like, what the f-? But And Jordan said, it's Half-Life 3. There it was. So we kind of got that. Uh, as far as game mechanics, yeah, you beat the shit out of stuff, see how long you can stay alive. Not much to it, but it's all right when you get other people to play with. Speaking of others, you have to bring your own because multiplayer is basically non-existent in this game. Another downside is that nineteen ninety nine price tag because uh, not a lot of single player content on hand. And so you're looking at like 60, 80 bucks for, you know, a couple of copies, three or four copies, because that's what you should expect to bring your friends and have a good time. But... All that said, at the end of the day, I'm still going to give it three cheers. All right. We got, we got any final thoughts to wrap up before we head out? Not really. It surprised me because when I first saw it on Steam, it's like, oh, more voxels. Yay. Great. But I really like the um, beneath mode. I, I, I like it. I like that, it a lot. That's what I got to ask you some questions about because we played the uh, bring your friends mode, which was fun. And mm -hmm. like, it, is this serviceable in forever alone mode as a standalone thing? Cause this uh, is going to be the primary thing because the, without some friends and like just the rooms, a bit of people, that shit gets real old by yourself. Uh, yeah. I know if you are playing in forever alone mode, beneath mode is the mode because this is the, uh, most thing that is more like a game rather than just a room where you can destroy everything or kill all the people. Uh, this is the game itself. I would make that argument. <laughs> one, 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 one thing in, in beneath mode that I really don't like is especially in multiplayer, there's no real good way to figure out where the fuck you are. You have like the Skyrimometer up top, but that's not very yes. helpful when it comes to like actually navigating through a network of caves mm -hmm. and especially yeah, in it's multiplayer. about your own awareness, uh, spatial so, so, awareness. So, so, it, it here, plays here's, here's the problem with that in role. multiplayer, <laughs> you get separated and mm -hmm. then that ceases to become fun. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, I think, uh, that, that is something that probably needs to be addressed at some point. Uh, maybe for paint the town red to paint the town blue. I don't know. Yeah. Actually giving an outline like, uh, left for dead does of where your, uh, co-op partners are that, that would be helpful. Yes. Yes. So, um, remember at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, paint the brown Ted. Indeed. <laughs> Coming up next. I, you get to watch me do some laundry. I'm going to fold some clothes and darn some socks. This is America, but let's change the subject. <laughs> this is, is Germany. Is it Pedro no. Mateus <laughs> of, of England? Uh, no, uh, of Portugal, technically. Currently living in England, but yeah, no, that was a uh, reference to um, a series I'm on YouTube. YouTube yes, poop. Yes, yes, uh, a YouTube uh, series. Uh, the classic. YouTube poop. <laughs> Specifically, uh, th the one th about L.A. Clarifying. Noir. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, uh, the uh, if you would like to uh, let me know how my puns aren't particularly funny or that I, I don't know, I guess Ven and Jordan can give you plenty of ammunition to ask me things. Uh, uh, go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button. There's a form you got to fill. Uh, there's some caveats at the top. You should read LGC Weekly as the show that you want to send your uh, hate mail to. Otherwise, we may be misinclined to construe it as some constructive feedback. And you don't want that. We do have some constructive feedback for you this week, kids. Oh, oh yeah, we do. As I say in my audio <laughs> fetish dungeon. This is from Synthetic <laughs> Owl. They write, Jordan. Ving. So, um, has, this, has his audio fetish dungeon. And even poor Pedro manages to arrange a Euro goth. Mise-en-scene. Thank you, lads. What do you bring to the table? Jordan, a pile of laundry. I, I can almost smell the gem odors wafting through my monitor. At least sit closer to your webcam <gasps> so you can face the 
obscures your face obscures the background. Um, okay. First off, I'm gonna give you a pro tip. All you have to do: close your eyes. <laughs> Tell me Listen what you see. Listen to the see. audio version <laughs> while listening. On, on, honestly, I would get rid of that laundry basket if it didn't call, if it didn't block enough of the the echo there. I gotta I gotta rig up something there. But you know what? I don't I don't fucking care either way. Ben tries to shame me about having cables on the floor. It's like, <laughs> whatever. As long, I think as long as I don't have human feces on the floor, I'm, I'm, I'm in good shape. Do you honestly think I put enough thought into shame you for something? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I know you're capable of it, I believe. Oh, I have the capacity for it, but I've just, I was just like, hey, new cable. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a game. We named shit. What do you get up? What's 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 the cable's name now? Stefan. Stefan. Uh, it's, yeah. it's a good name. It'll be something else next week if you move to the left side because I'll fucking forget. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have that problem too. If they come to me from another side, I just give them an entirely new name because they're a different person. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I too don't pay attention. Don't worry. <laughs> Jordan has already said that he's going to decor and smack up the background. Eventually. Yeah, he throws what, the qualifier what, of what, like before the I, death of the universe or myself. Once I ha- once I have disposable income again, sure, yeah. Now not so much. <laughs> you get a green screen. <laughs> I do I need to I need to fucking I'm gonna do that right now. Aldius, the green screen hasn't arrived. I mean you could just do the fireplace and <laughs> Yeah, I could, I could have a little drape. Yeah. I could have the carpets match the drapes. Nice little blanket. And my pubes green. I don't know. You you could paint yourself green. I did that already. Well, no, if you paint yourself green, what I can do is like key in laundry baskets. <laughs> no, no, just, make, just make me an, like, a, like a laundry basket Megatron. This is, this is the idea, man. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so They're not polka dots. They're laundry baskets. We do have some new people watching the show because, hey, check it out. You know, the stream deck is coming at the Gabe gear, the steam deck, whatever you want to call it. And they're tuning in. They're tuning in. They're saying things. They got words. Yeah. Platson, uh, he's uh, apparently he wasn't a big fan of uh, <laughs> the article from oh, a couple on, of weeks ago. What, what I said was, well, you know. What were we talking about? Okay, here's we, we were talking about. Um, uh, there was a comment from Valve saying, "Hey, we could see people buying this as their next computer." Which I said, um, "Yes." Now, <laughs> in the context I said this in was like, "Let's make it funny." Ah ha ha! It's called humor, kids. Unless you're replacing their core <laughs> humor duo. on the internet. What is this? Nope. <laughs> Pedro, haven't you heard? We are serious tech journalists, and we're not allowed. This is something that, <laughs> that there is a group of people who have nothing but dis- hate and loathing. <laughs> For anyone trying to make a joke when you're talking about technology mm-hmm. stuff, you know? Yeah, and Platson apparently doesn't like it either. Mockery is only funny when used to attack an obviously bad idea, saying, aha, it's just a handheld portable. Why would anyone upgrade to this unless they have a Core 2 Duo? Is one of the dumb mistakes on the Steam Deck I've ever heard. Dude. Bruh. Chill. Bruh. <laughs> as Bruh. the one dude, person Bruh. who actually Bruh, put down, <laughs> as the one person who actually put down the four pounds to reserve the uh, the slot for the uh, the Gabe Gear, I I am very much Look at on you, just board because with you have disposable income lording it over Jordan. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, poor, yeah no, Jordan uh, could afford a house. I cannot. So yeah, yeah I I'm can only afford over a, house. a damn thing. <laughs> Only a house. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, as the one person who actually put that down, and I very much intend to pay for it when it's once it's once Valve lets me know that it's available. Um, I know for a fact that it's not an upgrade to any of my systems. It's just another thing. I want it as another thing. It is going to be the next thing I buy because the GPU situation is shit right okay, now. Okay, Pedro, pause it this. Uh, but it's not the, an upgrade. The same day. The same day um, that that payment's due in order to get the shipment to go out from Valve. NVIDIA, in a desperate attempt, noting that Intel is crushing them all of a sudden, coming out of nowhere, drops the price of the 3070 to $400. And also your beard. 
<laughs> See, that's the thing. I, right you, now, if it wasn't right now, I wouldn't have Nori. the money to pay for both at <laughs> once. <laughs> womp womp. Um, Nori kick is that? Uh, she's way too attractive. Uh, the, uh, no, the, um, so now, right now, if it was right now, I don't have the money to pay for both of them at once. However, uh, I'm hoping to have the money to pay for both at once in December. Yeah, I, I don't I don't really see it as much of an upgrade unless you're in like that situation where you've been gaming on like a laptop you bought for college and that's like the one computer. Or the one you, you got for free yeah, from but school. Yeah. yeah. Like what I was initially thinking, like if you have four hundred dollars, you can get a lot more computer than you can get Steam Deck for four hundred dollars. That's bucks. true. Yeah. But if I again if you're if you're gonna be like if you're looking at, oh, do I want to buy, say, like a, a PlayStation versus a, a Steam Deck? May, I, again, I, I think I think the issue is the term upgrade. It is not an upgrade. It is an additional purchase. Yeah, in most is. cases, very much. It's a bonus thing. It's like, oh, I'm going to use this uh, Switch dock all the time. Mm. I, I mean, I do. Of course, you do. Um, over the past decade, you know, I've seen. <laughs> It, it really boiled down to me, you know, I've seen a lot of attempts at this convergence device. We've talked about it with several projects like Samsung's DeX and everybody else who's like, hey, let's take a portable thing and you would be really awesome plugging a bunch of shit into it with cables everywhere. That's everyone's going to love. That's never caught on. Not once, none, zero. Not going to happen because people don't want to ask Apple. People are bitching about having like two. You only connect a bunch of right cables now. to the dock. And but then but, you, again, but again, the thing itself just connects to the dock. Uh-huh. I, I I had one of those Apple laptops <laughs> where you, laptops where you needed multiple docks, and that is that is definitely not a situation you'd be. Uh, it's that's fun to be in. But again, for a simple gaming computer where you're really just uh, docking, like what? A, well, I'm a talking about using it as a regular monitor. computer. I mean, even though you're gonna have the dock and all the phone stuff that has promised this future, they operate the same way. And again, not a single one of them has ever caught not- on in the history of ever. True, and not a lot of them are using. And the pricing like, has always been decent hardware most either. Of them, to be fair, you know, yeah. but, but like if, if, you're, if you're using Samsung decks, like using using your your phone CPU for a desktop experience is passable, maybe, but not ideal. Let's see, here's the other side of that. I want this future to come. You know, I want that. I oh. Just lay it down. Boom. Okay. Hey, look, everything's going to work fine. But I got to base my statements on like previous attempts who knows steam steam they might be the one to crack it with this but i don't think steam's going for that i think steam's trying to make the best portable handheld gaming pc device they can not the other way around i don't think a lot of engineering time and a lot of engineering effort has been put into that option maybe it was just something a motherfucker said when he was getting interviewed to throw it out there's like hey bonus soda do you think that (laughs) could be a possibility i I do (laughs) i don't think most people are arguing that people that valve isn't trying to make a handheld console i guess they're just saying like hey you can use it as a computer if you want i don't know man apparently valve also said you can install windows on it (laughs) exhibit a (laughs) (laughs) the moral of the story is don't have an opinion on the internet kids it's a bad idea sir here's what really surprised me there's always going to be that one person well here's what really surprised me because we we see this and we're all guilty of it with different things and different stuffs it's like this. This is kind of early in the game for blind fanboyism. I like, yeah. The thing isn't even out yet. <laughs> yeah, my, my 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 take on it is I want to see what the actual physical hardware is capable of in like the hands of actual people and not media before committing to a purchase. Right, and we're just speculating like everybody else, man. So, ratchet I, 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 I want to believe just as much as the next guy, but right. you know what? We mm-hmm. it's it's the material reality, right? We got to see what the some pragmatic motherfuckers do. sitting back going, eh? We'll see. Got high hopes, but let's set that bar. You know, where we we, might we, we had our hearts broken by 3D effects. Everything, so, uh, yeah. Like we're just coming off that. <laughs> we're just coming off that. Oh, beautiful people. We do have to part ways with you. I know. I'm, I'm crying. Not really. Um, <laughs> if you got in touch with me, just hit me up. I'm on the Twitters. I'm doing that thing, man. You know, getting censored left and right. Not really. Uh, but I am on the Twitters at Vin Stone if you want to get in touch with me there. But if you're not down with the Twitters, that's cool. We got our own Mastodon instance. Can you say you do? We do. Thanks, Civic. Mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm there. I'm talking. I'm chatting. And I'm posting stuff. It's one of those deals. 
I'm Jordan Swung. I have all the wrong opinions on the internet, and I also have all the internet's dirty laundry behind me, apparently. Uh, you can see more of it uh, when I stream I occasionally. I really on- thought you were going to like just get all the laundry in the house and stack it all over <laughs> like a mountain. <laughs> See, that would require me to actually go do some laundry, which I'm putting off. Awesome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I stream occasionally on twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. Otherwise, you can find me tweeting uh, twi- or, uh, twitter.com slash Burning Fool at the Burning Fool. That thing, you know, yeah. links, they're they're in the description. Fuck. Yes. And I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me at unaccounted for F-O-U-R on Twitter, or if you must, I am technically on Mastodon, mass.linuxgamecast.com. That's unaccounted for with the actual number four not the upside down so, four no there you go Squiggly not, not the numeral four not the upside down four just the actual number four yes what is an upside down four if not a hate if All not right, a you H, beautiful beautiful psychopath H. let's roll some credits <laughs> yep lowercase it's, it's, h it's, well a mirror it's literally the san andreas meme fair. like ah oh, shit here we go again <laughs> <laughs> Why does it? Why does it? Rockstar fucking re-release that. We got to thank our lovely patrons, the people who are making this possible. Once again, our advisors, Omegas, and we got our Theron, and we also have our executive producers. Their names are coming up right now: Aldius, Barbrand, Scott, Michaud, Miss Fox, Dog, Adamacast, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Holy Toast, and Haku, and our little Nikki fans, keeping it strong, keeping it real. Darkwing and Abstraction. We got some sea monsters heading your way, starting with Jack B, Renault L, Ryder X Machina, Truggy, Vera Tenuta, Justin, and Frosty Claws. Well, the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marcin, System T, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresney, Kim, Smashley G, Chris, Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.1, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, Back, and Game Matron. Starting up with those and chairlings, Jason B, Michael <laughs> M, Todd, go for him, hit as many as you can. Christopher, Geek, uh, Colin G, you're welcome to play along too, Jordan. And Mag, Daniel L, <laughs> Scott, Douglas H, Douglas, Steve B, Steve E, Kentucky P. Linux P. Cast, Oil of Hope, Oil of Hope, Hope. and Monica. Monica. And Jim, our newest patron. Jim, Hello. Jim, Yay. and N- N- Nubbin also increased the, increased his pledge. So also you know, Nubbin, get on, get on yes. don't forget Nubbin. Uh, Nubbin is a sea monster. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Five dudes. <laughs>